So tonight we're going to do um, fresh spaghetti with uh, our homemade pesto, sauteed asparagus. Um, when you're cooking asparagus, you only really want to take the top bit as your whole piece, and then we can slice into this a little bit and maybe take some rounds. Um, but the bottom of the stalk's really woody, um, so you can make a stock out of it. You can make a vegetable stock, uh, which we will do. Um, we'll make like we'll make like a short, or it's called a corps bouillon, so it's like a, a light vegetable stock, and we'll cook the pasta in that. Um, but essentially, it's going to be a, a fresh made pasta, dressed with pesto, um, asparagus. We're going to cook with garlic, a little bit of spring onion, uh, a little bit of lemon, a little bit of thyme, and then uh, we're going to top that with a poached egg and some of our cured duck. So in the pot here, I've got um, this is going to be our pasta water, and I've taken the kind of woody stems off the asparagus. Drop them into the pasta water, I've put a garlic clove and just the tops of the onion. Um, and that's going to make like a weak stock. Uh, if you're going to make a full stock, it's called a bouillon. If you make a weak stock, it's called a core bouillon. Uh, so we'll cook the pasta in there. Um, on here I've chopped everything we're going to use. I'm going to start with a bit of uh, aromatic olive oil. Then drop a little butter in there. You'd actually be, you'd be surprised how much butter is used in Italian cooking. Not, not exclusively a French thing. Um, and we're going to let that sizzle up. And I want to give the asparagus a quick cook. Um, going to just drop them in there with uh, a little bit of onion, some of the thyme, and a bit of garlic. Um, another thing with you know, when you're using garlic, the really easiest way to get into it is just to put your, the heel of your palm on it and just squash it down. And when you squash it down, the skin just kind of like pops off. So you can take that off. Um, I've got enough asparagus here to make our dinner. I've um, kept the extra, and then tomorrow we're just going to make like an asparagus and pea soup, which will be a nice, nice little lunch. And uh, not to, you, know, you don't want to use too much for the sake of having it. Um, you don't, don't want to throw anything away either. So. Asparagus tops in there, sizzle them up in the butter, I'm just going to drop into my garlic, and I'm not, I'm not going to go nuts chopping this soup fine, I'm quite a fan of garlic, I'm quite fine with some sort of chunks. And, um, incidentally this, uh, this chopping block, this is, uh, it's made out of Greenwood that makes the breakers that go out into the sea in Essex and um, my dad's a carpenter and when these things get busted up in storms he picks them up off the beach, chops them out and he makes these uh, absolutely bulletproof chopping boards out of them. I'll, uh, I might put a little link, link up to his Facebook page. So in with our asparagus tops I'm going to take most of the garlic, most of the onion, most of the thyme. Just drop that in there. Rub, rub that off the blade. And you don't want to cook this too long. You get a bit of time on one, like that first side that went down. Knock it around. You see how the colour really picks up uh, when, it, when, when you cook up your asparagus. But I don't know why, I know we're in, we're in quarantine, we're in isolation, um, but the, the weirdest thing, <coughs> we've been to the shop once um, after 12 days. Um, I don't know why, but for some reason asparagus were cheaper than green beans. And I know they're coming at the season, um, but it cost us like €2.50 Euros to get a bunch of asparagus, which is a pretty good deal. Just leave that, leave that a minute or two. Um, you stop that. So after just a couple of minutes, that, that, that's done. You, you, don't, you don't want to overcook your asparagus, you want it to be ni nice and crunchy still. So I'm just going to take that off. That's going to go, I've got like a stainless steel bowl over here, that take that. And then I'm probably just going to use all the residual butter and the oil in there to just uh, cook off these last bits we got. So I finally... I've chopped up some of these asparagus bottoms and just going to wind the heat down. 
but quite a sort of medium heat. I might pop just a little bit more butter in there, sizzle up. A little bit more. And just give that a couple of minutes to, to just soften up. Just been on a couple of minutes, it's starting to soften a little bit. And now just going to go in a little bit of white wine. This is lots of bomb. And just cook that down until you just want to wait till the liquid's evaporated then and, uh, and you're back to just having asparagus in the pan. And then that's going to go in with our asparagus get this again. And then we're, we're at that point we're ready to cook and dress our pasta. So now the uh, we've cooked our cooked our wine out. Um, we just left with the asparagus and the onions and garlic and bits of thyme that were left over. That can go in with the asparagus we cooked off earlier. And <clears throat> I'm going to keep this pan. Because before we serve, I'm going to reheat the asparagus in here so we get the pan nice and warm. Drop the asparagus in, squeeze it with lemon juice, and then uh, that'll be ready to serve. The water we've got here that we've been kind of like just cooking up our leftover bits in to make a kind of weak stock. We'll get that all out, out of the way now. We'll get that ready for pasta. And I've also got another pan going here because we're going to have a poached egg on top of our pasta with our asparagus and a little bit of our cured duck. Um, a lot of people get stuck with poached eggs so we're going to show you how to do a poached egg as well. Um, so it's ready. It's not complicated. Uh, it's just water, a bit of vinegar and carefully putting your egg in. It's very important to always have a fresh egg. Uh, a fresh egg really makes a difference because the white on a fresh egg really holds to the yolk. Whereas as, as eggs age the white starts to loosen. Um, so if you don't have a really fresh egg, it's more difficult. I mean, we bought our eggs at the start of our isolation, and they're still within the use-by date, but we've been isolated for two weeks now. So uh, well, we're just going to see what happens. But the, the things you can do to help yourself is, uh, we, well, we're going to show you that now. So when you're poaching your egg, obviously you need a pan of hot water. You want to get your pan of water rolling. Uh, rolling means that it's not boiling hard, the bubbles are moving, you can see the water moving with the bubbles, um, and then you're going to take just a regular old white spirit vinegar, it doesn't matter what it is, but you just want something white, a lot of places use white wine vinegar, um, I've just got a spirit vinegar, and you go in with a really a good amount, um, and you're going to dab this off later on a kitchen towel, so don't worry about it being like super vinegary at the end. Now I'm going to bring that back on, so as we see the bubbles are starting to come back up. Now we're going to see uh, where we are with our eggs. <laughs> so the bubbles are coming up, you can see it's moving, That that's that's rolling water. I mean, give that another couple of seconds. I've got up quite high to bring it to heat. I'll just knock it off on. What it does is those bubbles lift the egg off the bottom. If you don't have those bubbles, the the egg's going to sink and stick. And if you have too many bubbles, it's going to knock the egg into pieces. So like, as well, go down into the water, get really close, and just drop your egg in. And as those bubbles work, you see like there, see it, the bubbles come underneath your egg, and they're going to pick it up. See the edges coming off? And that, that's how you poach an egg. You just need vinegar and you need rolling water. And the fresher the egg, the better. I mean, these are, as I say, they're, these are, we've had these a couple of weeks. So they're in date, but they are a bit old. We're going to be really careful dropping them in. By being extra careful, we're going to get a decent poached egg out of it. And uh, ne the next step will be to dab them off, but that'll be in about four minutes' time. So the test for a poached egg, it's uh, still a bit soft. You want to poke it, and it, you know, like the yolk needs to give. 
but you need to just check the uh, the whites cook. So the white around should be quite firm, and the yolk should still be soft. Though it's soft, and that's still just like a little bit, a little bit over, a little bit under. So I'm gonna put that back in. Pop that egg back down for just like another minute, and to me that now feels like a nice, nice runny egg, soft center, white, the white's all nice and firm. So then pop that onto a bit of paper towel. So the other one feels still soft in the middle but firm in the white, that's what we want. And I'm just going to pop that there as well. So uh, that's, our, that's our two poached eggs. Our pasta water is rolling nicely. And so now we're just going to drop our pasta in, cook that off, that'll be a couple of minutes. Um, if you worry about your poached eggs cooling off, it's absolutely fine to poach your eggs the way you want them to be. Drop them back in for 20 seconds, and that'll just that'll just warm, warm them up, up again. Um, so now we're just gonna get our get our pasta ready. So we're now ready with our uh, uh, spaghetti here, pans rolling over. Um, as we you know when you make your pasta, we've got two or three hundred grams of uh, pasta. We've got a couple of liters of water. Um, I'm gonna go in with you know approximately 20 grams of salt. I'd say it's about a pinch and a half. Um, what, like now we've got salted rolling water, pasta's going to go in. Um, whenever you're making fresh pasta, it cooks really quickly to so have everything ready for the next step. Um, also, when you're making pasta dishes, it's, uh, I mean, the, I practically will always put some amount of parmesan and lemon onto the pasta. Um, and a bit of olive oil. We've got our olive oil in our pesto that we made in a previous video. Um, so we're going to, to cook this off quickly. Uh, literally take a minute or two. Um, drain back in the pan um, and then we're going to dress it with lemon, pesto and uh, extra parmesan. So as with your, you have to take a bit more care with like your homemade fresh pastas. When they go in, you want to make sure that they're not going to hit the bottom and lump up. So just make sure you pick it up, that's all you need to do. And as soon as they form these like individual strands, you're fine. You're laughing. It's not. It's going to go well. Now, but you just got to make sure you don't let it hit the bottom. Uh, that is all it takes, and that's going to be ready so quickly. I'm going to, at the same time, see. Let's keep keep that apart. Don't let it bunch up. Yeah, you know, if you don't have one of these, use a coat hanger. Um, this pan is warm. Asparagus is going to go back in there. It's fine to cook things the way you want them, or even just like a tiny bit under. And at the last minute, you just want to put heat into it to get it ready. That's a really like nice way of staying organised. Cook things the way you want them to, and then uh, take them off, let them cool, and just bring them back and give them a quick blast of heat. I'm actually going to take my my steel mixing bowl that I use to hold these. I'm going to put this underneath my sieve to catch a bit of pasta water because I might want a bit of pasta water to make the sauce up. Pasta's been on for about well, barely a minute, but you know, like. That's already starting to cook and you definitely don't want to overcook your fresh pasta since you spent that time making it. So over here with my sieve. Just gonna take that and drain it. Catching the water down there in my mixing bowl. And then get that. Squeeze on some lemon juice. Just dress some of our pesto on there. Um, poached eggs, just want to pop a bit more heat in those, just drop those in now. Let's get 30 seconds of heat and then 
there, straight in there. Turn your asparagus through through your uh, your pesto. We can always put more pesto on here. I'm going to use just a little bit of our cheese, dress the pasta, and then save a bit of cheese for the final plate. So cool, that's that can all, everything's off now. Uh, take a bit of that pasta water out of there. That's probably enough. And we're, we're now ready to just, uh, just plate up. So just, uh, we're going to add a little bit of relish to this as well. Um, so here, if we, we saw in a previous video, video that we made some jardiniera. Kind of like a fermented and lightly pickled veg mix. Just gonna use a bit of that to add a bit of sort of like nice sharp crunch. And as well as that, we've got our our home pickled cucumbers. And if there's one thing that I can just highly recommend you do is just pickle a few of these cucumbers at home because compared to what you're used to and what you'll have when you do these at home are two completely different things. So to plate your pasta, so it's all dressed with our pesto. I mean, we, we eat quite a lot. I think everyone's gonna be putting on a few pounds in this phase. Just uh, take a bunch of your bunch of your asparagus tops, put that in there. Uh, a bit of our mix of pickled cucumber jardiniera. Then going go with our poached egg. And here we have our cured duck. I mean, that cured duck has got so much flavour. I mean, you absolutely have to try it. Just push this in around. It's got a nice punchy kind of tangy flavour duck as it goes around. And then, um, just, just to satisfy the chef in me, kind of plate a little white. There you go. So that is your cured duck with a pesto pasta and asparagus and jardiniera.